Hi, I'm Brendan, and today we're going to be talking about the three C's. So before we jump into this problem I drew up, let's just real quickly remind ourselves of the definitions of each type of cash miss. So first we have compulsory misses. These occur when you're first loading the cash, and you have compulsory misses because you have to add the tags to the cash for the first time at some point. So these are sort of like the first misses that you incur. Next, capacity misses occur because your cache is too small and wouldn't have otherwise occur if you had a larger cache. And then finally, conflict misses are um, sort of misses that you have because of everything else, which uh, usually happens because of the set associativity of your cache. So let's real quickly break down the final cache that we're looking at here, just so we have a good idea of what we're working with. So we see we have a 16 byte cache and a four byte block size. So we know from that information, we have 16 bytes in our cache with four byte blocks, and we'll have four blocks total. So if we want to just draw that out, we could just draw our little rectangle cache here, and we have four blocks. Each of these blocks would be uh, represent like four, four bytes in memory. And next we see that we have two ways set associative. So remember real quickly the distinction between way and number of sets. The number of ways does not necessarily equal the number of sets. The number of ways is how many blocks you have within one set. So we have a two-way set associative cache. So that means we have two blocks in each set. So we could draw another line here to represent our two sets. So we would have like a set zero here and then a set one here. So this would be the breakdown of our final cache. And I've represented this in the binary numbers as well. So since we have four byte blocks, the two least significant bits will be the block offset. And then that third uh, least significant bit right there, this will be our set index. And then these five most significant bits will be our tag. So now let's jump into the different cache simulations we need to perform. So to go about performing these classifications, we need to run three different simulations. So for the compulsory misses, we start with these. And to see if any of these misses are compulsory, we simulate these memory accesses on a fully associative infinite cache. So one point of clarification that can be a little bit confusing at first. Since remember, our final cache was set associative, but now all of a sudden, we're simulating on a fully associative cache. We need to make sure that we add the set index bits in with the tag. So in our final cache, we see that our tag is five bits, but when we run uh, the, this set of memory accesses on a fully associative cache, we would see that the uh, tag would actually be six bits because we're gonna merge this set index bit with the tag itself. So again, remember that that's because this is a fully associative cache and fully associative caches don't have any concept of sets. You can think of it all as like one giant set. So to begin, our first access is um, just all zeros in binary, or OX00 in hex. So we see that our, our, uh, our tag would just be six zeros. And of course, we're, we're assuming that our cache is starting empty. So naturally, this would be um, a cache miss. So what we would do is we would add our tag to the cache. And since that was a miss, what we would want to do, since we were performing the simulation for compulsory misses, we would say that this is a compulsory miss. So now repeating the process for 0x, 0b, again, we see that tag is not in the cache. It's four zeros and then one zero. So we add it to the cache, our four zeros, one zero, and say that's compulsory miss. Now, same thing for 0x11, also a miss. So we'd say that's compulsory. Now we see here, we have the same tag of six zeros. So we would see that that's in our cache. So we wouldn't call that a compulsory miss. So what we could do is in the meantime, say that we have a hit, but remember, we need to still perform the simulations for capacity or conflict. So we might need to uh, shift this um, zero X, zero two access down from a hit to either maybe potentially a capacity or a conflict miss. But we won't know that until we perform those simulations. Now 0x23, you would see that's uh, a miss. That tag is not in the cache yet. It's 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. So compulsory here. Uh, same thing for AF, not in the cache yet. 
So 101011. So that's compulsory. Now here, four zeros, one zero. That's right here. This is our second cache line here. So we would say that, again, for the time being, we would want to classify this as a hit. And now for a 0x13, we have three zeros, one zero zero, which is the third cache line. So it's also we could call it hit for now. 0x05, zero zero we have five zeros and then a one. So we don't have that in our cache yet. So let's add that tag and call that a compulsoriness. Now 101010 is also not yet in our cache. So compulsory here. And then finally, last one, 0xAC. Uh, and so we see that that tag, those six most significant bits, matches with this cache line right here. We have 101011. One, one. And so again, for the time being, we classify this as a hit. So that's how we would run the simulation for compulsory. So now let's do the same thing, but for capacity misses. So now for the simulation for capacity misses, the cache that we use is still fully associative, but now we make it the same size as our final cache. So this would be a 16 byte cache. And remember we found out that that means we could have four blocks. So I drew up this cache here that has four blocks. Our tag would still be six bits instead of five because this is still a fully associative cache. But now since our cache size is limited, I added on the LRU bits here. I didn't write it up here, but for this problem, let's assume that this cache uses LRU replacement policy, um, like we generally use throughout the rest of the class as well. So now remember when we perform this simulation, when we have misses on things that are already classified as compulsory, we would not then move them to capacity. So the, the hierarchy would be compulsory, then capacity, then conflict. So once something's marked as compulsory, we wouldn't then mark it as capacity or conflict. So now for our first um, three axes, we would have uh, the same, really the same uh, process that we did for compulsory, since those three tags uh, are not in the cache. Those would all end up being misses. Nothing would change there. So we have uh, for a zero x zero zero, we would put that tag in there and to simulate the LRU. Let's say that a lower number means you've been accessed more recently, and a higher number means you've been accessed less recently. So that means that if we need to evict something, if we have an LRU here of um, four, then that's the cache line that would be evicted. So we would say that after our first access, we would say that the tag of 0000, zero, 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 zero would have the LRU of one. So now for zero x zero B, uh, still a, a miss, so we have those four zeros and then one zero for the tag. And so now we would say that this is most recently accessed and then this is second most recently accessed. Same thing for zero x one one, put that tag in the cache. Let's see. And now we would say this is the most recently accessed and we bump these down. Okay, so now for the 0x02, zero zero this tag is in the, the cache already, so it's not a miss, but we do need to make sure we update the LRU bits. So now this has been, the, this is the most recently accessed cache line. So we'll change that to one and then bump all of these down accordingly. Okay, cool. Now for 0x23, zero we have 0, zero, one, Zero, zero, zero. So that is not yet in our cache. So let's add that. Zero, zero, one, zero, zero, zero. So now most recently accessed and now bump these down accordingly. So that goes to three. Now this goes to four. So now that means that if we need to evict something from the cache, this is the line that we would boot out. So now we're looking at zero X A F. And so we have one zero one zero one one, which is not in our cache. So that means that this cache line is going to get evicted. So we'll erase this. And now we'll write zero X uh, AF, which is one zero one zero one one. And now this is most recently accessed and we bump everything else down.
Okay, so now we're looking at 0x0a. Zero zero so that's 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. We see that is not in the cache. So now we had previously classified this as a hit, but now when we're doing our simulation for capacity misses, we see that we have a miss. So that means that we would unclassify this as a hit and call it a capacity miss instead. Because again, on our capacity simulation, we had a miss there. So we would call that a capacity miss. And so now what we would do is put that tag into the cache. So we would evict this line right here and write in the tag for 0x0a. Zero zero so we have four zeros and then one zero. And now this is most recently accessed and we bump everything else down. Okay, now looking at 0x13, zero three, three zeros, 0, zero, zero, one, zero, zero. Also, another miss here. We see that that tag is not in our fully associative cache. So we would call this a capacity miss and add that tag to the cache. So we would bump out these four zeros, or these six zeros, and write in the tag for 0x13. Zero and make sure you update the LRE bits. Okay, now looking at 0x05, zero zero um, that is not in our cache, so bump this out. Add the new tag. Update RU. Again, remember, since we already classified that as compulsory, we do not change this compulsory miss to capacity. It stays as a compulsory miss. Now, OXAA, we would see that that is not in the cache. Bump this out. And then uh, update the other U bits. Okay, and now we would see that um, uh, for the last line here, 0xAC, zero 101011, zero one zero that is not in our cache. So we would downgrade this from a hit to capacity. So this is the current state of our, uh, of our classifications after running the capacity simulation. So now finally, we run the final simulation for conflict miss, which is on the original cache that, cache that we drew up the actual cache structure that we were given in the problem. So now to perform our final classifications for conflict misses, we perform a cache simulation on our actual final cache. So this is the cache that we drew up at the beginning. It's a two set, um, set associative cache, um, four blocks, two blocks in each set. So starting off with the first access here of zero, zero. So we would uh, see that nothing's in the cache. So this is still a miss. So let's add that tag, just five zeros here. So that's our most, uh, most recently used. And now same thing for zero x zero B, we would see that we're looking at set zero here because the set index bit is zero. So we'll go to set zero and add that tag to the cache since it's not there. And now this is most recently used and we would bump that down to be less recently used. And now for zero x one one, we would go to set zero as well. The set index bit is still zero. We would see that the tag is not in the cache. So we would evict the least recently used item, add our new tag, which is three zeros, a one, and then a zero. Update the LRU. Okay, and now we're looking at zero x zero two. We see that tag is five zeros in set zero. So we look in set zero, and we see that for this particular memory access, the tag is not in the cache. So we actually have a cache miss here, which is interesting because we had had um, hits in the two previous simulations, 
But since in our final cache we had a miss, this is something we would call a conflict miss. And so then what we'd have to do is add that tag to the cache and it makes the least recently used item. So now we would just change this to be our new tag, five zeros, and now this was most recently used. And you would bump this one down. Now looking at zero x two three, we're still in set zero here, and we have a tag of uh, two zeros, one zero zero. We would see that's another miss. So we would make the least recently used item, put our new tag in, which is zero zero one zero zero. And so now looking at zero x a f, we see that we switched to set one here because the set index bit is a one. So we would go to set one. There's no, uh, there's nothing in either of the cache blocks. So we would add the tag here, one zero one zero one. Make mark that is most recently used, and that's still a miss. So it's still compulsory. Now for zero x zero a, looking back at set zero. So we go into set zero, and we see that that tag four zeros and a one is not in the cache. So we evict the least recently used item, add our new tag. Next, 0x13, we see still in set zero. We look for that tag, and we see that that tag is not there. We have three zeros, a one, and a zero. So it makes the least recently used item. update the LRU. Okay, now moving on to 0x05, we're looking in set one, and we have um, a tag of five zeros, which is not in a cache. Now this is most recently used, let me bump this one down. Still a compulsory miss. Next, 0xAA, we're back in set zero, and we have one zero one zero one. That tag's not there. Same process, just a bit. And update the LRU. And now finally, on this last line here, we're in set one, and we have a tag of one zero one zero one. And so we see that this is actually a hit. And I think this is uh, one of the more interesting cases because before we had classified it as a capacity miss. But now all of a sudden in our final cache, we have a hit. And so if we're representing our final cache and simulating on this, and we have a hit, then we would, we would still classify it as a hit as opposed to a capacity miss. And so although uh, capacity misses have uh, uh, are higher in the hierarchy than conflict misses, you could think as uh, capacity misses sort of trump conflict misses. If we have a hit in our final cache, we would still classify it as a hit. So a hit in our actual cache will trump any sort of conflict uh, capacity or compulsory miss, because of course a hit isn't any sort of miss at all. So this is the final breakdown of the three Cs for these particular memory axes. It can take a while to run through these problems, but hopefully this gives you a better idea of how you'd want to walk through something like this.